Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today I will be discussing on a topic which is related to income which is dividend, withholding tax and reclaim. Before we go ahead into the details of this topic, let's understand what is dividend. Dividend is the money or the cash distributed by the company to the shareholders of the company and company is distributing that from the income or the profit generated on a particular year. So if you understand the characteristics of the dividend, first is dividend is distributed from the income or the profit generated by the company. And second is dividend can be paid in terms of cash or it can also be paid in the form of stock. Then it will be known as a stock dividend. Now, we need to understand from the fund positive view how this dividend is important in the fund point of view because the definition what I have given it is from the company perspective. So, if you are working on a fund which is an equity fund and that fund holds lot of equity security, those security will be paying out dividend on a certain amount of time. So, company can pay dividend monthly, quarterly or yearly. As a fund accountant, if you are working on an equity fund, it is your responsibility to check whether the security is going XT on your valuation date. Now, I mention XT or X date. What is that? A dividend income is associated with four important days. Those are declared date, X date, record date and pay date. I have created a separate video on the dividend important dates. You can check the details there to understand more about these days and important of these days. In this video, I will not touch bit into details of that. We will be concentrating on majorly two important days which are daily we will be dealing with is the X date and the pay date. Now what happens on the X date? X date is the most important date for fund accountant because on that day fund will start the accrual of the dividend and the NAV impact for the dividend payment of any security within the fund will happen on X date. So remember this again I will repeat if there is any NAV impact that will always happen on a X date. Why I am repeating this because it is one type of a interview question sometime you may come across with this so let's give you an example so that you can understand let's assume there is a fund day hold 100 shares of security x now on a given day let's say your valuation day is on 15th of september and on 15th of september security z is going xd the rate for the dividend is 0.04 and the pay date is 30 of September. When you see the information that a security is going XD in your fund, which are the things you should review? You need to see that what is the X date for that security? What is the pay date for the security? What is the rate for the security? And last but very important point, when you are checking all this information, you will be checking it from the external source. So external source can be Bloomberg, Router, IDC, whichever is the best practice in your company. You need to see what which currency the rate is reflecting into the external source. That is something which I have seen multiple time in my work experience. And uh, sometime it so happened, let's say uh, the example I have given for security Z, it is uh, in your system, the security is set up in GBP currency. And when you are going to an external source to review the rate, the external is, uh, source is reflecting it into the USD currency. So in the USD currency, the rate will show something else. In GBP currency, the rate will show something else because of the effects. But sometimes we don't see that the there is a change in currency. And many a times I have seen that people will proactively go and change the rate based on what they have seen in the external source. But this is wrong, right? So if you have a currency, a rate in USD currency and your system have a GBP currency and you are putting the USD rate in GBP, then your accrual will be wrong. 
so that is the reason it is very important whenever you are checking you need to check all these factors so now the example what i have given so we had 100 shares and then the rate is 0 0.04 so obviously for security z the fund a will have four dollar so the x date was 15th of september the way it will happen from 15th of september till 29th of september fund a will continue to accrue four dollar as a income receivable on 30th of september as it is a pay date it will move from the income receivable bucket to the cash bucket now why uh, x date is important because a company when it is distributing income from its profit there will be a drop into the price as well that is what is expected so ideally whenever there is a income distribution happen uh, uh, from the company side there will be a price drop so from your market value perspective if you have a market value into the plus you the accrued income you are getting it should be the the increase into the market value due to the accrued income actually get nullified because your price is getting dropped but again there are multiple factors which are impacting the price change of a company so it is not only that because the income is distributed every time if the income is distributed your price will drop but it is an ideal scenario but if the market is uh, very good and there are other factors which has impacted it may so happen that even if there is a uh, income distribution you will still see there is a raise rise in the company uh, share price sometime it will not rise but it will remain same i have seen like almost i will say 40 to 45 percent time uh, when I was valuing a fund, I have seen for an equity fund that there is a distribution happen. There is a dividend uh, uh, going XD, but still the price has not changed. Price remains same. But in that case also, if the price remains same as a fund accountant, whichever fund is going XD, you should not only check the X date, pay date, rate and currency and everything. You should also see what is the end of the day price. What is the price movement from the yesterday till the valuation day where it is going XD. If there is a price change, if there is a positive price change, you need to check if there is any other factors which have which has contributed towards it. And if the price remains same, that also need to be checked from the external source. So it is a very important factor when you are accruing dividend into the fund on a X date. After the X date, as we will be having the income as a receivable into the fund, on the pay date, you are just changing the bucket from the income receivable part to the cash part. So $4 which was supposed to be income receivable, it is coming as a cash into my fund. So in that case, I will ideally, I will not have any impact into my fund because it is just movement of the bucket but it can have a uh, impact into the fund in case you have accrued for four dollar but for some reason there was a uh, partial distribution or there was a cancellation or anything that you have not paid four dollar instead you have paid three dollar or you have paid two dollar in those cases whatever you have accrued and what you have paid there is a discrepancy between that because of that to that extent like let's say here for one dollar you might have a nav impact into the fund now if the fund you are working is an international fund then you will see with the dividend income there will be a tax associated with it so while you are accruing the dividend you also have to accrue the tax as well so when i said that if your security is going xt you will be checking what is the x date pay date and rate in the external source you will see with the rate the tax factor also will be mentioned so the example i have given below that the security z is uh, going xd on 15th of september with a rate of 0.04 you might see there is a tax component associated with it. The tax rate is 0 0.0002. So in this case, like we have a 
gross dividend in this scenario you will have a gross dividend and a net dividend so the gross dividend will be four dollar how much will be the tax the tax is going to be 0 0.02 dollar and the net dividend will be the gross dividend minus the withholding tax which is 3.98 dollar in this case so sometime what happens is the custody which is the another component of it there will be a discrepancy we see that fund accounting is accruing the dividend uh, dividend and the withholding tax but the custody is not accruing the withholding tax sometime it can be vice versa so in those situations as a fund accountant we need to first check the external source we need to check with custody we need to confirm the dividend amount and the withholding tax amount and then we need to go ahead and process it the third important concept which comes with dividend and the withholding tax is the reclaim what is reclaim reclaim is when you have a withholding tax on a particular security sometime it depends on for which jurisdiction this security is held that some of the tax amount will be refunded to the investor and that tax amount which is refunded is known as the tax reclaim now it is not always that whenever there is a pay date on that day only you will get a tax reclaim so that's why it is a kind the treatment of the reclaim tax reclaim is uh, way different than how we do for the dividend and the withholding tax so when we go into the same example so let's say we have a, a rate which is 0 0.04 the tax is 0 0.0002 the reclaim can be 0 0.0001 so i have seen that like when you will see in the external source you will get all the information regarding this so when you will be accruing on the 15th of september if you have with the dividend withholding tax and reclaim you will accrue the dividend of four dollar you will accrue the tax of 0 0.02 dollar and you will do nothing and the accrual stage you will do nothing for the reclaim it will remain same it will it will just uh, not accounted on the pay date on 30 of september when you are actually paying it how you are going to pay you are going to pay the net dividend of 3.98 dollar and what you will do you will have a reclaim of 0 0.01 dollar which you are going to show along with the payments but it will not hit your cash then and there it will again remain as a receivable in your fund so in some of the companies you will just uh, keep it with a future settled date so it will be a cash which is not showing into your books now it will stay as a uh, income or reclaim receivable so we don't know when we are going to receive this so sometime uh, it may take one year or two year as well so it is very important when you process the reclaim or you show it as a future settle date you need to clearly mention that for which security it is like as a reference so that in future again if you see the reclaim you can go back and you can relate to it so you need to clearly mention what is the x date what was the rate what was the pay date which was the year and which was the security for how many number of shares this reclaim was posted with the future settle date so it might happen that in 2020 you have processed a reclaim and in 2022 you have you are getting you are actually getting the reclaim for security z but by that time you don't hold any shares of security z in fund a in that particular time you have to go back you have to relate you have to search so if the x date and the pay date and the number of shares is not mentioned correctly it is very difficult to relate because always remember only security number will not be sufficient suppose a particular security is quarterly paying security and whenever there is a payment there is a withholding tax there is a reclaim so that means in a year you will have three or four dividend going uh, xd and it is getting paid and you will have reclaim along with this and in two years you have seven to eight reclaim as a receivable in your fund so then after two years when you see and sometime it also happen i have seen that the rate and the withholding tax rate and the reclaim rate will remain same 
you are not doing any trading into the fund so your number of shares also remains same so every time your dividend amount withholding tax amount and reclaim amount will be same even if it is a quarterly payment so if you are trying to uh, settle a reclaim uh, let's say for a january and for january and for let's say for april and for october your reclaim amount is same and you have not mentioned correctly which is the x date or which is the particular date and the rate and the shares when you are trying to settle the reclaim you won't be able to relate it or you won't be able to settle the correct amount that might cause an issue to you in future and that might cause an issue from a fr perspective as well that is the fund reporting perspective so that's why it is very important whenever you are future settling a reclaim always make sure that you are mentioning for which x date and for which rate and which number of shares which security this reclaim is related to so that even in future if someone else is doing the fund they will also be able to find out that reclaim from the reclaim receivable and they will be able to settle it so this is all about the dividend and the withholding uh, tax and the reclaim concept if you have any doubt please uh, share that in the comment section i will definitely try and answer your question and also i will come up with more videos soon so keep watching thank you very much